Well, hello, welcome once again. It's Joe, it's August 27th, it's Tuesday. Let's get into a market roundup. You guys know the drill on the responsibility part of this. I'm gonna take a look at the meaningful news of the day. Let's take a look at what these markets have done technically, if anything, and let's share some trades, as always, with our community. Disclaimer, this video was created for professional stock and option traders. Maverick Trading is a proprietary trading firm that employs professional traders around the world. Our traders trade firm capital and keep 70 to 80% of profits they generate. All trades and analysis in this video are for professional traders only. If you are interested in becoming a professional trader for Maverick, click the apply button in the video description. Let's break down what happened today. As we move into our market analysis, folks, you're going to see not much has changed. We basically just kind of stayed flat as we put our heads up against this resistance level. But boy, I'll tell you what, what a pretty aggressive, I should say a strong correction we had since that uh, sell-off. Let's jump straight into the daily news here. Flat across all majors today as they creep into resistance levels. We are back up to highs on the SPY, very close to them. We've actually exceeded a high. Well, I didn't really see where we closed, but in the diamonds, the Dow itself, the NASDAQ, not quite there, but it's it, it had no problem getting back up to its highs that it set in June. So Fed expected to cut at least something 25 to 50 basis points is now the conversation is 50 too much is 25 not enough that's going to be a fun thing to look forward to over the next few weeks but uh based on what was said from jackson we could almost plan on it we'll see what uh, markets uh, the sentiment of the markets will do with it so far sentiment has been strong another uptick in consumer confidence levels for july obviously those do lag uh, but based on the market's recovery it seems like we are still in, uh, I, I'm going to have to say a bullish side of things. How do we finish? Completely f flat. Dow, uh, 0.02, that barely registers. Same with the NASDAQ and the Qs at 0.16. Russell's down slightly. Oil down 2.22, but understand, folks, after that little bit of scare with production overseas, it was up over 3% yesterday. It's just kind of a push-pull, kind of, I think, a knee-jerk reaction, like Corey mentioned. Gold at, uh, is flat. Where are we at as far as the advanced decline line? 52, 44 advanced uh, decliners versus advancers. I'm starting to see some selectivity within the sectors. I know we always look for the underperformer and outperforming sector, but man, I ran some scans across all sectors and I found strong stocks and I found weak stocks. It's, it's starting to get a lot more selective. Above and below the 50-day moving average, 69% above, 31% below. That actually was, it could be 70-30, let's call it. But overall, the move that we've had off of this bottom has been pretty substantial and very strong. Let's get into it. And I think the thing that jumped out the most, and I, I didn't want to zoom out too far, folks, but uh, we had a pretty good march up from this area. And if I could draw a line, if you guys want to zoom out on your own charts, you'll see that this is actually three months of gains. It took us three months to get up to this high, right? Well, we had some scares. We had some worries, inflation data all sorts of stuff, and we, we, we collapsed. That, that's great, but understand, folks, this is the beginning of August, and we are still in August, and we are back up to all-time highs relatively quickly. There wasn't a panic to buy into this, but there sure as heck wasn't any more selling off of this bottom. That just says that sentiment's there. I, it could be the fear of missing out traders. It could be a short cover rally. Uh, it could be that there was just enough money exiting from this top to where the markets just kind of found a bottom. What I love, it's all speculation and none of it matters. What does matter is the fact that we are right back up to these areas in the same economic situation that we were when the panic started. So this is actually what we refer to as a knee-jerk reaction and we have really not much to trade off of when it comes to any sort of sentiment change because folks, sentiment hasn't changed. It was just a very aggressive corrective action. Yeah, sure, some of those higher flyers, as we move over to the queues, for example, were, uh, I, I don't want to say beat down, but they seem to have the largest percentage moves to the downside. And so far, are, are climbing back. Yes, they climbed back, but not nearly as high as we've seen the Dow or the SPY. The SPY was the last chart you saw, folks. It was almost as high as the Dow is actually threatening to break into new highs. So is that just a, hey, let's pull out of some of these high flyers in the tech and a flight to safety going into some of the Dow components? Or it's just the fact that this is a little bit overreactive. Uh, the economy is still strong and we had some people buying off the bottom. 
all speculation. None of it matters. We have to follow our charts. Let's move over into the heat map. And this becomes a little bit more confusing as we're seeing all sorts of brown, some green, some red, some brown, and none of these really real sectors are underperforming or outperforming against each other, especially the last few days. However, selective stocks are. Inside of these sectors, there's things that are breaking out, although the sector might show a little bit of sideways to weakness. A lot of it's going to be specific to their forward earnings and expectations. Are they a flight to safety? Are they been, have they been oversold? So it is, it's been a really interesting thing when I go to scan because I'm finding all sorts of great trades in all sectors and all sorts of bad trades in all sectors. And just be mindful of that as we scan. So that doesn't really change much for me when it comes to our outlook. I'm going to keep it exactly where we were yesterday. I'm not seeing any sort of pattern here that's going to make me really run and jump in. However, I'm not going to short it. That is for sure. The only thing that's actually hope, uh, moving, keeping the weekly outlook, or I should say the monthly outlook from going to a plus two, plus, or plus two and a half to plus three, is the fact that we just have a 20 and a 50 that are flip-flopped. They're both trending higher. Their slope's great. They're just flip-flopped. And the reason why they haven't crossed each other yet is because this corrective move was so aggressive and so fast that that 20 could not even turn hard enough to get back up. When you snap that rubber band, I need to see it sustain itself a little longer um, before I could be comfortable getting a little bit more aggressive in its direction. Let's get into some trades here. Let's jump straight into our bull. This is American Express. DocuSign also looked good, but I liked AXP. I did like financials because out of all the sectors, it's, it's stabilizing, showing a little bit more strength. This is a pretty aggressive ascending triangle pattern. Uh, so if you guys want to take this pivot into it, that's great. But I'm going to focus a lot more on the fact that this thing hit it almost three times. And it looks like it might want to slide higher. I do like to see the increase in the volume to the upside. So got to be a little bit patient with it. But it seems like it's in a great place. Uh, definitely worth looking at. Let's go over to our sideways. This is Aventar. And I, I did like it uh, because it looked like it had a pretty solid bounce here. It, this, this rollover almost looks like it's about to happen, but it could take some time. I was looking to play this kind of a range bound oh, between the, just below that, uh, at just pretty much 24 up to 2580. Um, if you wanted to give it maybe 26. So that's actually kind of tight considering, but something sideways, but not directly sideways. I want to give it a little bit of a range. You can see in the past here, it did seem to consolidate across these areas. So I imagine it might just kind of repeat that. Now, don't get me wrong, folks. I had a couple of sideways that I've been looking at for the last couple of weeks, two of which actually broke out higher. Uh, so could this easily break out lower? Sure. That's kind of why uh, we play them sideways for a shorter term. But if you don't like the way the markets are reacting, you don't have to play things sideways. Let's move over to my bear example. Out of the two, I decided to go with Valero. I um, understand they both look really good, but I just like this because it was kind of on its floor. It looked like it really wanted to slide below that 141 50 level, uh, we'll call it 140, but a really cool descending triangle pattern here. Um, if you wanted to take it a little wider, yeah, we had a little bit of a blip, but that could have been from a few things, but I just like this, that the uh, decrease to the downside. If you wanted to go with a target, you could actually look back in the past. However, I'd probably snap a Fibonacci on this, but folks, I really wouldn't do anything too long of term just because these markets are back up to resistance levels. Consolidation only lasts for a little bit. And uh, based on some of the reactions we've seen, um, I don't expect them to stay here very, very much longer. So overall, the diamonds in the SPY have regained all of their losses in less than a month. It wasn't even close. I mean, we had one or two down days, but there were gaps and they traded back down afterwards. If you look at that, it was just since the beginning of August, up, 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 and they're right back up there. In fact, I think the diamonds are threatening highs. Uh, the queues aren't quite there, but they have revisited June highs. Now understand, folks, June highs were all-time highs for the NASDAQ itself. So all-time highs in June, and then in July, it set even higher highs, and it's come back down. So sentiment is, is bullish. I'm just saying that to all my bears out there. It's off the bottom. It's back up to where it used to be. So we do need to see more of a technical pattern here to confirm a solid trend. I want to echo what Corey said yesterday. It was wonderful. It's in an area of extension off of this bottom to where there's no pattern there. Uh, we could see a pullback and maybe have a support, and it'll move higher. Uh, Corey drew a cup and, uh, cup and handle pattern, very common up at this point. Or it could start to come back down and then just fall apart. I don't think we're going to see that without some sort of massive scare or bad news. Um, the cup and handle is a little bit more realistic. 
However, folks, I'm still speculating on a pattern that hasn't happened yet. So we need a technical pattern here to really confirm a solid trend. Other than that, you're just playing a momentum. So any of you slow players, two, three, four weeks out, we don't have the pattern in the markets overall to be confident. And when I'm seeing the sectors, it's, pie it's piecemeal. I'm seeing every sector have great stocks, every sector having bad stocks. Be very cautious and a little bit shorter term. Fed is expected to cut in September. The big talk is going to be, is it 25 or 50? Is 50 enough or too much? Is 25? It's going to be fun. It's going to be blah, blah. But hey, we need some sort of drama. PCE on Friday. But I think the PCE might be a little bit followed. And that might be that contingent of it's going to be a core, uh, 25 basis points or 50 basis points. Once again, it's speculation. Let's follow the charts. Check for earnings on trades as always. Now, folks, that's all I got for you. Be patient. If you don't need to make a trade, don't. Uh, we just came off of a pretty good correction and we put it all back on. So let's see where these markets go. Thanks for joining me, folks. We'll talk to you next time. Bye, everybody.